Today we celebrate the Ascension, and the Ascension has an, always been very meaningful in my mind. You know, I thought, well, there's the Resurrection, very important. There's Pentecost, very important. And you have also this celebration in between the Ascension that they don't really get much the meaning of it. And then I see how, you know, maybe when you start to go up, up to a mountain and you ascend a little bit, you look down and you turn and you see things from a different perspective. You know, maybe from the bottom of the mountain, the mountain peak is so far away. But then when you look things from a different perspective, it's not that bad, it's not that hard. So I think the Ascension, it's a, that beautiful feast and celebration we have to help us that invites us into a different perspective on life, invites us to the, have the perspective of God to life, to things that happen to us. And you know, I'm sure you have heard, or maybe you have talked to people, have seen beautiful experiences of life where people really ascend and try to have a different perspective on life. You know, just recently I met with a group of dads who um, wanted to be better dads. And so they gave up electronics, they started to pray a little harder, they started fasting because they wanted to be better dads. They wanted to see things from a different perspective. You know, sometimes I met with couples and I see those couples who are trying to make it work, even when it's hard. Even when, you know, people all around us are saying, it's fine, you should give up, it's okay to divorce. They say, no, we want to stay together. We want to see things in life from a different perspective. Or when I see, for example, young couples, or young people like some of you here who choose to respect their body, respect the way to express love to one another, and say, there's a proper context for that. I know everybody does it, I know everybody lives together, I know everybody does whatever they want, but I don't want everybody's point of view. I want a higher point of view. And so they ascend and they see life from God's perspective and it's beautiful. And you know, sometimes things can seem contradictory, but when you ascend and you have a different perspective, things make sense. Because for example, we take the readings for today. First reading says Jesus is ascended into heaven. He's living and it's a good thing. And then in the gospel he says, I am with you always until the end of the age. So did you ascend and left us or are you with us always? You know how good parents are. You know, if you want to be a good mom, you don't want to be a helicopter mom. You need to leave room for your children to learn because you're giving them directions and even to make mistakes. If you want to be a good dad, you're not going to fix your children's problem. You guide them, you teach them, but then also you give them the freedom, the room, the space so that they can learn and not even make mistakes, but you're always there. You're always there, you don't leave them alone. And Jesus, by living and at the same time being with us, is giving us this space to say, I told you how to get fullness of life. I gave you the direction, but I also leave you the freedom to follow me. I cannot oblige you to follow me. And so the church, who is the bride of Christ, does exactly the same thing. The church is telling you where to go, which direction you need to take for this fullness of life, for this joy, but it doesn't force you. It doesn't force you and he says, she says, I'm gonna be here. I'm not gonna condemn you. I'll be here praying for you like a good mother. I'm gonna be here and give you forgiveness if you need to. Help you to heal whatever got broken and scarred if in the, in the meantime, as you are learning and as you are experiencing things, you get hurt. Now, which parent will say after their child fall, I told you so, and it's so good to you. 
this is not a good parenting. This is not what we want. And you know, lately, um, I think there's been something that's been on my heart. And I think uh, even more because recently I watched it for the second time, this documentary. It's called um, Desire of Everlasting Hills. I don't know if you ever watched it. It talks about three stories, three beautiful stories of people who experience same-sex attraction and how in their personal journey they find God and the church in their own way and how they chose to respond, how was their uh, struggle and the beauty of being embraced and find something that was meaningful for their lives. No, I'm sorry for people who experience same-sex attraction because they never hear the good news preached to them. No, they even hear like a bad theology who says, you're wrong, what you're feeling is wrong, you are a mistake and you need to repress. But God doesn't make any mistakes. Or they hear the very opposite where the community says, embrace it, live it. That's just who you are. And so you take 5% of who you are and you make it your whole identity. You take a little bit of what is important in life and you make the whole thing of your life. You know, to let you understand this point, I think I can give you an example. So if you, let's say somebody is a big Royals fan. And he's such a big Royals fan that his car is all about Royals, he dresses all about Royals, he talks all about Royals. The money he makes are all spent for the Royals game, and the vacation he takes are all related to the games of the Royals. To follow them, you will say, well, there's a little bit more to life. You might enjoy the Royals, but that's just a part of your life. There is more to life. And so why do we take a little bit, just a little tiny bit of one person and make it their whole identity? This is not fair. And you know, and this is part of our fault, us as part of the society, because everything is filtered through a three-letter word that people use to express intimacy, connection. But then because this is so stuck in everybody's mind, in the way we joke, in what we read, in the movie we watch, in the way we act, that people are confused. You know, so if you're a man and you see another man who is virtuous, is a great leader, he has charisma, he's funny, you feel attracted to him, it's normal. But then you think that that attraction needs to be physical. Or if you're a woman and you see somebody who's very sensitive, spiritual, beautiful, joyful, you feel attracted to her, that's normal, but then you think that it has to be physical. Because our society all evolves about this three-letter word, and it's, it's such a mess. But the good news is that there are some hidden saints. I've met some of them through Courage, through Desert Streams, people who really embrace who they are, and people who are unfortunately rejected from us, the church, because they think, we think, or we tell them a wrong message that they need to repress who they are. And they're rejected also from the so-called LGBT community because their way of life, it's different, and so they're prophets. And they're not really welcome in their own house or home. But yet these people have found a way to live, a beautiful way of live friendship. You know, if you live friendship with somebody who is caring, who is challenging, who loves you, who protects you, who understands you, that goes beyond male or female, priest or religious, husband and wife. That's for all of us. So that's the good news, that it's also for those people, and also maybe for all of us, not just us and them, for all of us. There's an invitation from the Lord that says, I can give you direction, and I gave you direction, 
but I also want to give you room. I want to give you space. So in your freedom, you can say, Father, I want to follow you. I think the challenge that can come for us is that during this week, we need to really mark our forehead, maybe really seal our heart and say, we need to ascend. We need to ascend on the things in life that don't make sense. We need to ascend and find a different perspective, finding God's perspective on life. It's leaving us room. It's leaving us free. But it makes, it makes much more sense when we see things from Him. Why is this? Why are you having me do that? And so every time we ascend, we experience something new, we experience the resurrection, and we're preparing our heart for really the Holy Spirit to come and renew the face of the earth.